¿Registradora? Ya estoy grabando. Ah, bueno. Ok. Hello, everyone. Greetings from Mexico. Uh, on behalf of the CBI team uh, Mexico, we would like to firstly express uh, our thanks for making us part of this important webinar. And we would like to share with you uh, the experience that we have been developing in country uh, to respond to the COVID-19 pandemic and the elements that could be beneficial to this webinar in terms of the use of new technologies. Uh, on behalf of the CBI team composed by OCHA, uh, uh, UNDP and Senaset, we, we would like to share with you this 10 minutes presentation to share with you what we have done so far in Mexico. So first of all, let me introduce you to the context, actual current context in Mexico uh, uh, within the pandemic, which is not the best, I will say. Uh, we have been confronted to a trend which in overall figures, uh, many people have been affected in terms of uh, people infected, we have overpassed the million people up to today. Unfortunately, in terms of human impact, uh, the people that have been uh, by this uh, this uh, virus is, has been uh, over the 100,000 people. Unfortunately, Mexico now is ranked fourth in terms of uh, death toll. Uh, only compare uh, with the United States, Brazil, India, and we are sadly on the fourth place globally. Beyond the human impact, the socioeconomical impact in Mexico is very important. Uh, from figures of the Economic Commission of Latin America and the Caribbean, uh, the GDP in Mexico will be affected by the end of this year uh, minus 9%, which is huge for an economy as Mexico. This represents that in terms of uh, suffering uh, of uh, affectations in terms of livelihoods, in terms of economic losses, Mexico is one of the countries that are going to be very affected within the region. And something that is very important to highlight is that because of uh, the context of the response, the emergency is considered uh, as uh, a, a national uh, security uh, response, which, uh, which uh, um, is uh, something that presents a challenge for the coordination, since this is not uh, an emergency by a natural disaster or, or, a, or another crisis that leads to a national coordination mechanisms that consider uh, uh, other entities as NGOs. Uh, of course, as United Nations, we are supporting government, but uh, all this is under our uh, incident and command mechanism led by civil protection and military forces, uh, uh, which presents a challenge in information exchange and, and uh, coordination itself. So uh, my name is Juan Pablo Fari, I work for Ocha. Uh, this is the overall context. And now I would like to pass the word to Luis Gomez, uh, Senaset uh, lead in Mexico for CBI. The floor is your, yours, uh, Luis. Thank you, Juan Pablo. And greetings to all of our, the member networks of, Senas, uh, of CBI. I am Luis Gomez, uh, Vice President of Senaced uh, in Mexico. And as you may know, uh, we are also part of the Connecting Business Initiative. And we have uh, in country in Mexico, we have a partner along with UNDP and with OCHA in order to develop uh, an IT platform uh, so that we can uh, generate the re registration of all of the NGOs, uh, whether foundations, uh, corporations, uh, civil associations, or individuals from the private sector that can come up with a potential support in the event of uh, a response 
to the COVID-19 pandemic. Uh, today, we have uh, developed uh, the platform. We are in the process of, of putting all of the technical um, architecture in place so that we can make a, a broad call to all civil society in Mexico. Senacer is the head of this effort and is the partner of uh, uh, the UN and UNDP in this effort. Um, and we want to get all of the participation of the Mexican private sector in this difficult time. So with that, uh, we are using this platform as a technology tool so that uh, instead of having to uh, hold um, uh, meetings face to face, now we have the ability to do that on a virtual basis. We can uh, call upon all of the members and try to identify potential plans and potential uh, activities where we all can add value. And that's really the, the great opportunity that's come about by putting together this platform. I would like to pass uh, the floor to Joanne so that she can explain to us uh, the UN system, how does it work? And it's uh, coming together along with Senacer. Thank you. Thank you very much, Luis. Hi, everyone. I'm Dr. Joanne Holoy, working with OCHA team. For me, it's very important to say that United Nations has a great presence with more than 25 agencies, programs, and found here in the country. They collaborate in different areas for disaster risk, risk management in Mexico. There are also agencies that participate in this initiative that my colleague will talk about uh, a few minutes after. And also the humanitarian network is made with non-governmental organization and the network here in Mexico is one of the countries with the largest number being regional. Also, they can cover the Caribbean and Central America area. And it's articulated with the private sector, the NGOs and the United Nations through work tables, which Blanca, my colleague, will talk about. Thank you, Joan. Hello, colleagues. My name is Blanca Jimenez. I'm from UNDP coordination team for CBI Mexico. Since the official launch of CBI in Mexico, we have had working sessions with United Nations agencies. They have proposed to integrate the information around thematic work tables in four priority sectors, lead by Sena said with the support to United Nations agencies and local NGOs. The tables are one, food security by FAO, two, health by PAHO, three, economic recovery and livelihoods by UNDP, four, water and sanitation by UNICEF, this week, the WASH and Economic Recovery Coordination work tables are launched and, by, and fa facilitated by UNICEF and UNDP. The food security and health work tables are in preparation. Thank you. Go ahead, Edgar Gonzalez. Hello, uh, my name is Edgar Gonzalez. I am the National Program Officer of Environment, Energy and Resilience in UNDP Mexico. Uh, I would like to provide a, a brief comment on the process that we're supporting for the development of the platform and the dialogue tables uh, for early economic recovery and uh, promotion of resilience livelihoods. Um, UNDP is facilitating the coordination and synergies um, around other private sectors and NGOs networks that are implementing or are interested in, in support economic measures and programs to stop or restore the livelihoods and economic, economic activity of the most vulnerable people affected by the COVID contingencies. Uh, we will start this dialogue tomorrow. The idea is to set the basis of a frequent and fluent dialogue among this organization and another that could join later. Highlight the, the work done, promote synergies and coordination, identifying needs and opportunities and improve the collective response in, in the country. The development of this platform is a parallel process that is expected to be functional soon. 
um, through the initiative, the, this inno innovative platform, the entities participating in the tables could join and use the new digital tool to improve their communication, share information, and facilitate the coordination between, between them and, and, and other users. Uh, the platform is also expected to be functional for other emergencies. In that sense, uh, it, it will be part of uh, the capacity strengthened of the private sector in Mexico to attend emergencies. Uh, in order to have a better idea of the programming and the platform and the services that it, it is expected to provide, I will leave the floor to Eugenio Gomez, who is supporting this, this effort. Please go ahead, Eugenio. Thank you, Edgar. Greetings, everyone. My name is Eugenio Gomez. I'm Director General of Transparenta. Uh, Transparenta, alongside Piensa Sostenible, are the, the ones who were commissioned the full design and development of, of Impacto Mido, which is this initiative uh, everyone here is talking about. I would like to talk specifically about two focal points about of the platform, first of all. Uh, we're building a flexible tool, uh, a flexible technological tool who, who would allow any organization who wants to join up the initiative to concentrate efforts with, with the coordinators of the, of the platform. The, the development of, of the tool is divided in two phases. The first phase is fully online. The, it consists in prayer registration of, of organizations that are members of the private net networks of the coordinators of the of the platform. The second phase of the platform will consist in the development of the full uh, recovery programs and and coordination tables such as health, such as uh, nutrition and and economic re uh, recovery. Also, um, I would like to add that. This is a great opportunity for all the organizations who seek to coordinate in a virtual and fully online way to join up the, the platform. So um, without further delay, I would like to yield the floor again to Luis Gomez. Thank you. Thank you, Eugenio. Um, also, uh, what we are looking into is the ability to grow this platform and to strengthen the response of all of the participants in a coordinated fashion in order to govern Mexico uh, and um, have the, the capability to identify uh, the most important uh, impact where we can actually uh, generate a, a change and a transformation. It's a difficult time. It's a very sensitive time because, as uh, Juan Pablo mentioned, uh, the government uh, has taken the role of uh, leading the response to the, the pandemic. And usually, when the, the the private sector wants to come and help, uh, it's looked at as uh, with suspicion or with uh, a, a different optic, uh, as only. A, a general desire to really support and overcome the, the emergency. And we're trying to be very constructive in every single way in order to generate the best response uh, that we can create. And we have to, to provide also the government with the confidence and the trust in our capabilities and what we can do together. So that is the way we are envisioning the development of the platform. And this being a, an important tool so that we can uh, reach out as, as, as far as we can in order to generate this uh, movement in a national level. I would like to ask uh, Juan Pablo just to close the, with a couple of ideas. Uh, thank you, Luis. Well, thank you all for listening to us. Uh, and uh, of course, beyond the the benefits and the added value of this platform in Mexico, uh, we believe that this experience could be beneficial to other contexts, perhaps to high, other high middle country, high mi middle income countries uh, within this region or others. 
So uh, this is a, an experience that we would like to share with you. Thank you for listening. And we hope that this could inspire and be beneficial to other, other responses within the world. So uh, on behalf of the CDI team in Mexico, thank you very much for listening. Uh, please stay safe. And uh, let's uh, work together to overcome this global challenge. And uh, we, we are very happy to listen to you all as well and to learn from your experiences. Thank you very much and Godspeed, Godspeed to all. Thank you. Thank you.